Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In a recent video, renowned economist Harry Dent delves into the complex dynamics of the global economy, shedding light on unprecedented government interventions, the pitfalls of overstimulation, and the looming consequences of tightening measures. Dent argues that the economy is on the brink of a significant downturn, driven by a series of policy missteps and the inherent imbalance in the market. In this expert analysis, we will break down Dent's insights, examining his views on deficit spending, inflation, and the impending challenges that could reshape the economic landscape. Dent begins by highlighting the staggering amounts of money injected into the economy through combined deficit spending and money printing. He points out that the money printing alone exceeded $8 trillion, an unprecedented figure in economic history. According to Dent, this massive intervention reflects a belief among economists and the Federal Reserve that they know better than the market itself what is best for the economy. He emphasizes the need for the free market to operate in both directions, allowing for innovation but also permitting the natural cycle of companies failing and debts restructuring. Dent characterizes the current state of the economy as an economic crime, attributing it to a prolonged period of overstimulation. He argues that the government's reluctance to let the economy take a natural course of boom, slowdown and restructuring has created a bubble. The turning point came with the sudden inflation spike of 9.1% post-COVID, leading to an overreaction by the authorities who tightened measures aggressively, a move reminiscent of the early 1980s. Dent predicts that the impact of this tightening will fully materialize in late 2024, contributing to a substantial economic downturn. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. In, in combined deficit spending and money printing, the money printing was, was eight point something trillion dollars alone. This has never been done. This is saying that economists and the Federal Reserve know better what's good for the economy than the economy itself. The economy has no problem booming and then slowing down and restructuring debts and, and knocking out zombie and failed companies. That what people don't understand is free market capitalism goes both ways. You not only have to encourage and allow innovation, you have to allow companies to fail and, and technologies and things to fail that didn't work and get out of the way so we can keep innovating. So, so this to me, is an economic crime and i think they put this off i think as long as they can and what what they finally happened here daniela is they stimulated so hard the one final time now this is from 2009 14 years straight stimulus first time in history but they went off the charts in the two years following covid and by doing that they created this sudden 9.1 percent inflation when we were going down as my numbers said they should towards one percent and that caused them to say, oh my gosh, you know, then, then they had to turn around with that inflation and tighten, and they tightened 525 basis points. That's the most since 1980-81, which caused the deepest recession since the Great Depression back then. So, so everybody's thinking, oh, well, the economy can handle this tightening. No, this economy's been stretched now many, many years past the demographic peak which did occur in late 2007. That's why we had that strong downturn 2008-9. That downturn would have gone another year, year and a half longer if they hadn't stimulated out. And then a technology cycle came in very positive into 2020, and that's been down since. So, so the fundamentals are down here. The economy, I'm just telling you, I've studied this economy for 40 years now. The economy wants to take a rest. The economy wants to get rid of bad debts and, and zombie companies and, and, the, and the government and politicians won't let them. So, so I say what happened here because they overstimulated, that was the mistake. And now they over tighten this tightening. And, and this is another clear fact that people don't talk about. It takes basically a year, more like a year and a half to fully hit. So the tightening that peaked in March of 2023 will not fully hit until late 2024. And I think this year we are going to see the economy yeah. down because they've already put this in motion and it'll be many months before they turn around and, and loosen and it'll be too late. Have these people, either of them, you just mentioned the two big names on the Fed, it doesn't matter how far you go back, any one of them ever uh, ran a business, you know? No, not a single Fed chairman has run a business. Businesses know 
that you have to grow and then you have to cut back. I mean, I was my first stint after Harvard Business School was 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 consulting to Fortune 100 companies were getting eaten by lunch by the Japanese and the second stint was small businesses in California and all they do is go under and then restructure and cut costs and get meaner and leaner. That's how the economy actually works. Okay. You're not supposed to boom forever. You're supposed to grow and then restructure and set back and reevaluate okay. and go okay. again. If I was just looking at charts and didn't know what I was looking at, this would be a slam dunk. All we're doing, we had a big bubble, both in real estate and stocks at the same time. You got to remember the first time stocks bubbled first in 2000, when that bubble wore out and crashed, people went right into real estate and bubbled that up into 2006. And then that crashed and then everything came down into 2007, eight. And then we would have had a deeper recession without that or depression. Okay. So now we've had both bubbles, stocks and real estate, artificially boosted this time by massive money. When money gets thrown in the economy, they didn't send checks in the mail to Homer Simpson. This money bought financial assets directly into the financial markets, and then it ends up boosting everything, bonds, stocks, real estate, everything, and then you get a giant bubble. Well, bubbles only do one thing. The first bubble in stocks was 2000. It crashed 78% in the NASDAQ, the bubblier stocks, in a boom, which was going to continue, as my indicator said. This time, you know, it, it's got to crash 86%, the S&P 500, just to get back to the last low in early 2009. This isn't erasing the entire boom since the early 80s. It's just erasing the artificial bubble since 2009, which was, was not even a natural growth period. It was artificially created. Drawing on his four decades of studying the economy, Dent reminds viewers of the significance of allowing the economy to take a breather and shed bad debts and zombie companies. He argues that the fundamentals of the economy are currently down, with a natural desire to undergo a correction. However, Dent contends that the government's interference in this process has led to a precarious situation where the economy is stretched beyond its limits. Dent draws attention to the dual bubbles in stocks and real estate, explaining their interconnected nature over the past two decades. He asserts that the massive injection of money into the economy artificially boosted both markets, creating a giant bubble. According to Dent, historical patterns indicate that such bubbles eventually burst, with the current real estate bubble being particularly alarming. He predicts a potential 50-60% decline in home prices, signaling the magnitude of the bubble's inflation. Homes just go back to the last low 2012. Now, here's the shocker. That's 50%. Hey, I don't care about 86% decline in stocks. Most people, everyday people don't own that much stock. What's going to kill everyday people is their home going down 50 to 60% just to get back down to recent 2012 prices. What that tells you, Daniela, how big a bubble we just had. And there's never been one bubble, and I've studied everyone in history in the last 20 years since these bubbles started to become a major feature of our economy. Every bubble has burst and they burst drastically. Stock bubbles tend to go down. Uh, again, like 29 to 32, 89%. Housing, a, a longer period. Last time, housing peaked ahead of stocks in early February, 2006 and bottomed in mid-2012. It took six years to reach a bottom. On the other hand, in early 2009, when stocks bottomed, most of that damage was done and you could have already gotten really good bargains in, in, in houses, okay? So it's gonna take longer for real estate to bottom. There's gonna be a long period when people can buy houses at bargain prices, but stocks already had the first crash in 2022. Only the largest leading indexes had barely eked out a new high. That's creating divergences now. The small caps will never go up another 20% and, and to, to, to make new highs. And that will create a huge divergence that says we ought to be expecting a major long-term top alone. Stocks ought to be over this somewhere between late 2024 and mid 2025, because we've already done some shakedown in stocks already, including in, in, in the Midwest and Northeast of that, but, but the, the, the continuation tends to be p people moving into the Sun Belt, you know, from Southern California, especially Arizona, all the way through Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida, et cetera. I mean, we got people moving down to Puerto Rico because of the tax advantages, but actually not that many. So, so I, you want to buy real estate in the areas, you know, the, the ones that bubbled up the most are going to burst the most and therefore be the best bargains because that 
the, the fact that they went up more than other areas already shows that that's where people are moving. Mm -hmm. So this whole Sun Belt, high-end homes are going to go down more than everyday homes. So you're going to get even better bargains. And of course, most baby boomers aging, you know, are going to prefer quality they can get it, even though they may not have as many people in their household. Amidst the economic challenges, Dent suggests strategic investment approaches. He advises holding long-term as treasury bonds as a safe haven during the anticipated crash, emphasizing that the US, despite its debt, remains a comparatively stable option. Dent also forecasts a unique buying opportunity akin to the sales of a lifetime, with stocks reaching prices that may never be seen again. He highlights the potential for long-term gains in the tech sector and urges investors to consider opportunities in the Sunbelt real estate market, especially in upscale homes. Dent looks beyond the immediate challenges and explores international trends. He identifies India and Southeast Asia as promising regions for growth, particularly in the context of urbanization and demographics. While expressing concerns about China's overbuilt economy, Dent remains optimistic about the millennial boom in the US, foreseeing it as the driving force for economic recovery into 2037. Toronto bubble is as bad as about any bubble in the United States. Australia, where I speak a lot, has bigger real estate bubble than anybody other than China, okay? China's the top bubble, then Australia, then Canada, then the US. So real estate, uh, Canada's gonna feel wow. it more in real estate overall than the US and, and, and less probably in stocks. I wanna hold the longest term U.S. Treasury bonds. I know we got too much debt, but so does everybody else in the world. We have less debt to GDP, the U.S., than Japan and Europe and all of our, our developed country rivals, okay? We're the best house in a bad neighborhood. The 2008 crash, when it got to its worst, even gold fell 45%. Uh, the only, and stocks bottomed there in, in early 2009. Um, real estate, everything went down. Only the U.S. long-term Treasury bonds went up. So. T-bills will preserve your crash when everything else falls. That's great because you're avoiding the losses and then buying at the sale of a lifetime. And here's what you got to not miss here. This will be in our lifetimes, you know, and similar to 82 if you go way back, okay, the, the, a, a rare time where you can buy stocks at prices you will never, ever see again. And not just here, but the up and coming country in the world, China's done. China's overbuilt. They've got enough empty houses to last them for everybody else that's ever going to move to a city because they overbuilt. India is the next China that in the next four decades is going to expand and urbanize. In the third world, urbanization is the biggest driver because it makes three times the GDP per capita and, and demographics are our second. India has demographics to grow and you know it to 1.7 trillion, 1.4 today. China is going to shrink from 1.4 trillion people to 800 million in the next 50 years. So, so the best place internationally is India and Southeast Asia. And again, the Sun Belt and real estate in the United States, upscale homes, which will be the most on sale. And of course, the tech stocks will tend to go down and, and the small caps more, and they'll be the best bargains to buy. Um, and, and, and what we do have in the US we only have one more significant boom, and that's the millennial boom, which is not as long or does not go as high relative as the baby boom. But they, the, the millennials will take us up after this crash into 2037 in the U.S. So I, I, in here in the U.S., I, I would, I'd like to be most in the NASDAQ and tech stocks because that's where we still lead the world.